Hey, thanks for coming to my channel. What I have behind me here is a old 84 megabyte quantum SCSI hard drive. And you might be wondering, where did the drive come from? Where it came from these computers right here. These are old Macintoshes from the 90s, I think late 80s. Uh, these computers came in for data recovery along with a very, very big uh, iBook G4. So, uh, you know, I'll accept any challenge when it comes to data recovery. So we took that on and um, here we are with these computers. So I'm not going to talk too much. You know what to do. Like and share, follow these videos. It really helps the channel. So let's get this done and see what's on these computers and on these hard drives. So you might think, why am I showing this iBook here and me reassembling it? What is the reason? Because part of this job was actually to um, recover data mainly from this iBook. And I gotta say, this is one of the hardest laptops I've ever had to take apart. And thank goodness for uh, 8-Bit Guy. If, he, if you haven't seen his channel, you should check it out. Lots, a lot of retro computer stuff there. He had a video on how to disassemble it. Now, if you pay close attention, I actually screwed up a few times putting it back together. Uh, some, somewhere around here when I was plugging in the keyboard uh, I put this panel back on and I forgot to plug in the keyboard and you can see me putting the uh, the top case back on and just somewhere here I realized yeah can't plug in the keyboard and here I'm unscrewing it so I can put the keyboard back in I think I also missed a few screws uh, putting this thing back together I'm gonna have to reassemble this thing one more time but anyways this laptop is just a nightmare to take apart and put back together and if you really don't know what you're doing here you can really mess it up because there's a lot of screws different sizes different lengths it's just very difficult to take it apart there's also little magnets you have to remove and put back together it's just it's not fun I don't want to do this again And here we are to the main event. So three of these systems came in. Uh, first I had to triage and figure out what's what. So I took this first one here and I plugged it all in uh, to see. I got to make sure they work first of all, right? So I plugged it in and um, after plugging in, I turned it on and well, we got a question mark. And soon after I realized this first uh, Macintosh actually does not have a hard drive. As you can see by my face, I realized there's probably no hard drive in this one. So we can rule that one out, we can put it away. Then I grabbed the second one. And there was no particular order uh, I was grabbing them. It just so happened the first one had no drive. So this one here, as soon as I plugged it in and powered it on and I listened to uh, the system itself, I could hear a hard drive. But as you can see on the screen, couldn't see anything. It was just, I'm sure just a cap needs to be fixed, but this, it wasn't a repair operation. This was strictly data recovery. So <clears throat> we know this one's got a drive, so we're gonna put this one aside. And now onto the third one. Put it on the desk here, on the bench, and let's uh, plug it all in and see if this one works. And we see the light there blinking on the, on the, on the uh, computer. The only thing is, I thought I heard a hard drive, but unfortunately I didn't. The drive was not spinning in this one. Okay, so let's open these computers. Let's start with the second one, the one that I definitely heard the drive spinning inside. So we have two screws by the handle here, and then there's two more on the bottom here. Some of them actually have a screw behind that flap there. And then the case just goes up uh, away from the machine. Sometimes it's kind of sticky and it won't move, but... So let's unscrew all the screws. Here's the first one that's coming up right now. And they were pretty tight. I had a hard time twisting the uh, the screws out. Maybe because the screwdriver is so small. Uh, it would have been nicer if I had a much longer one so I can really grab the handle and turn it. Plus, these computers haven't been open in how many years? At least 20. Let's speed this up a little bit. I'm um, just checking for screws under the flap here. You can see the color of the uh, case discolored uh, from UV light over time. And uh, we're gonna loosen the last screw here. And we got the back case taken off. <clears throat> now, very important here, if you work on CRT monitors, you have to be careful because you can get a serious electric shock uh, by touching the tube. So, uh, especially don't touch anywhere there. 
I'm supposed to discharge it, but I don't work on these, so I'm not exactly sure how to discharge it. I think you have to remove that red wire that goes to the side of the CRT tube and stick a grounded screwdriver in the butt. Don't know any of that, not gonna do it. So here's the drive. Let's take the screws out. The ones on that side were easy. Now, I'm trying to figure out how to take off the other ones. Uh, it's not exactly the easiest thing. So I think the side panel's gotta come out. I didn't wanna unplug everything because it's just gonna be even more work. So I just loosened it enough so I can kind of wiggle the screwdriver through the side there and uh, unscrew the screws. Now you see me putting my gloves on. I hope these are uh, electrostatic proof. If they're not, then I'm gonna die. I think they are. I know they're heat proof. They have some rubber material on the other side, so hopefully they're safe. And since you're watching this video, I must have survived. This is the cable I was talking about. This cable has to come out and you gotta stick a screwdriver in there. For more on that, you should watch 8-Bit Guy. He's all about retro computers. I'm sure you've seen his uh, content on YouTube. Great content, by the way. So we're almost done here. Uh, loosen the screws. I'm just trying to um, get the screwdriver in this. I'm loosen these side screws on this hard drive. And I think that will be the last screw that's gonna finally loosen the drive. You can see my bolt head there. Okay, so this is the last screw now. I think the drive should be free and we should be able to get it out of the computer. Oh, maybe there's another screw. Just checking it. Yeah, that's it. Here's the drive. So if you have never seen this drive, this is a SCSI, 50 pin SCSI drive. Uh, it's a 84 megabyte. It actually doesn't say anything on the, on the drive itself. I didn't see anything that indicated the size of the drive. Uh, you can see it's from 1990 pretty old drive if you think about it okay so <clears throat> I had to look for a computer in my lab that actually has old SCSI connections I found this old system I used to use for old SCSI raids this one here supports the newer SCSI and the older 50 pin um, just making sure it works it has been turned on a long time I salvage a battery after this one too so it doesn't save any BIOS information so I just gotta set it up here and here's a better look at the drive here again. You can see Quantum. I think CA bought them out. But here's the drive. I, I'm wondering why Apple chose uh, SCSI over ID. I, I know the SCSIs were a bit faster. Uh, but interesting choice. So here I'm uh, configuring date and time on the system. Because it was set to 2001. Because like I said, there was no battery in the BIOS. And here we go. We're in Mint. I'm just going to make some room on the hard drive. It's not a big drive on this machine. And we're gonna shut down. Okay, now I'm gonna plug the drive in. Uh, SCSI cables need termination at the end, so there's there's a terminator at the end of this cable, which is good. Otherwise, the drive would not show up. So here's the drive. It's plugged in. I can actually hear it. So that's a good thing. Um, not sure how video, how much the video picks up here, but um, it's definitely uh, drive spinning, and hopefully it's gonna show up in this uh, this management here on uh, Linux. Um, we got light blinking here on the SCSI card, so that's a good sign as well. So we'll know in a minute uh, where we at with this drive. So okay, so we boot it up. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. So we got the drive to read through DD Rescue. It showed up as 84 megabytes quantum drive. So we did DD Rescue. We took an image of it. So now we have a 84 megabyte image. So now we're gonna put the computer back together, swap the drives, and uh, we're gonna read the other drive. Hopefully the other drive works as well. And the reassembly is pretty quick. You just have to go backwards uh, how the drive was taken apart. Sorry, the computer. I'm just gonna plug in all the uh, wires. I have probably one of the fan wires. Get the screws back in. Put the case back on. And we're done with the system. Let's get the next one up on the bench and take this one apart. You can see the model number. This is Macintosh SE. I think this is uh this one's a bit older. This is from 1988. So I think the first one we did was from 1990. Um, 
this one's a bit older. So we got the case off, and now we see the drive. This is a much older SCSI drive. You can see the um, how thick it is, and the uh, MOLUS connection for power is a little bit different. It's kind of plugged on an angle. I mean, it's the same connection as as we all know. If you work on computers, you've seen these connections, but the connection is from the bottom a little bit. So I'm trying to figure out if I can get this drive out of here. I'm just looking over how the drive is mounted. This one is a little bit different than the first uh, one we took apart. We have the bottom shields here. So I don't really see screws that I can loosen. I, I see screws on the side uh, to loosen, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this drive out of here that easily. So maybe you gotta think of a different solution here. So that's why I have it plugged in. Uh, I ended up connecting the SCSI cable to the drive directly from my recovery machine and hooking up Molex cable uh, from that machine as well. So I, I supply the power from this uh, computer you see here into the Macintosh and I also moved the, uh, the SCSI cable over. It, it was just easier that way instead of me trying to figure out how to get the drive out. It was just I didn't want to waste time. So you can see the light is on. Uh, the drive did not spin up unfortunately. And I couldn't figure out why. I think this drive is seized. These older drives, they do seize easily. Uh, we're not going to go any further. We're going to ask the client what he wants to do. I think we got his other data, so he's pretty happy with that. So the drive does not show up. But if you uh, if you look here, the light is blinking. So it's... I don't know if uh, the problem is caused that I'm on a different port part of the cable. That could be causing it. Um... But I'm gonna play around with it off camera and then if I get it to work, I'll continue filming. So I'm almost certain the drive is dead uh, because I plugged the power in from the, from the computer itself and the SCSI card back into the uh, system. And you can see it blinking, but it's not really working. And you can see here on the screen that it's uh, asking for, uh, for the drive. So it's not really seeing the drive. So I think uh, this one's not gonna be recovered. So it's okay, we got two out of uh, four. One had no hard drive, so that's that was expected not to get anything. But well, one had a drive that uh, we recovered already. This one had a drive, but drive doesn't work. And the last one was the iBook, which we got full image uh, from. So I think uh, two out of four is pretty good. Uh, the client was mostly after the iBook, but uh, it's good that we got uh, at least one of the Macintoshes. I'm pretty happy with that result. That's it for this video. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna have any more vintage stuff coming up anytime soon because this stuff doesn't come here that often. But when it does, I will make sure to make a video on this because this was quite interesting. Even for me, working on these things, it was I thoroughly enjoyed it working on the, these kind of computers. This is the kind of stuff I saw when I was younger. I mean, these computers go back to the 80s and I, you know, I'm in my 40s. Um, so I've seen these computers, I just never had them. I, my first computer was a Commodore 64. Uh, and then I had an IBM, but definitely it's fun to work on these systems. Anyways. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more content. I will continue making videos from Mondays. Um, make sure you share, like, subscribe, drop a comment. Tell me what you like and what you didn't like. Uh, hit a like. I mean, it really helps the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.